everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. And it's a good one today. We're going to be giving up some really good juice about how to catch giant pre-spawn bass and where to look for them. Regardless of bass species, the areas I talk about will provide you the chance of catching some giant pre-spawn bass. Uh, I'm going to show you an aerial photo of what the areas are like, kind of walk you through it a little bit. And then you can go back to your home lake or the lakes in your area and try to find similar looking places because I can assure you based on my experience and travels around the country, these areas hold up no matter where you are at for all species of bass. Uh, it really should be a pretty fun episode. If it's something that you guys like, let me know. Put in the comment section that you enjoyed this video. I was thinking about maybe breaking each one of these down into a separate video. So if that's something you guys think would be helpful, please let me know and I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, before I get into it, I do want to remind you guys that if you're looking for some help on your local lakes, go into the description of the video, click the link to uh, fishthemoment.com where you can look through all of the different lake breakdowns that myself, Johnny Schultz, Randy Blockett have done. Uh, we've covered lakes all over the country in all different stages of the year. And you get, uh, if you go ahead and purchase one of those, you get 40 waypoints that we have identified as being good spring spots, summer spots, fall spots, whatever season it is that you want. Uh, and if we don't have a lake done yet, you can request a lake breakdown from yours truly on your local lake, regardless of size. All right, guys, so that's basically what this is. If you're looking at lake breakdowns for the spring period, you're going to get a lot of these types of juicy looking spots that I've identified. So the first spot that I want to talk about, and remember, guys, these are areas that you will find big pre-spawn females. I'm not saying you just identify one area and you'll catch it, but these are areas that they will be using. So the first spot that I want to talk about is an isolated rock. Okay, isolated rocks are some of the best single targets that you can find. In this case, you can see here I've got a point with several different isolated little rock piles off of that point. If I were to zoom out on that point, you would see that that point is primarily like pea gravel, a little clay, nothing fancy, and then all of a sudden you have these big boulders that are sitting there. Those big boulders will grab way more heat from the sun than anything else in that area. Uh, these to me are like gems when it comes to tournament fishing because you can pull up, make a handful of casts and move on to the next one. But they are magnets for big pre-spawn fish of all species. Spots, smallmouth, largemouth, all love them. It just depends on where it's located. If it's if it's a big boulder by itself in the back of a creek, it's probably more largemouth. If it's on the main lake, it could be spots or smallmouth, uh, but they hold fish regardless of where you're at. They're pretty easy to identify using uh, aerial images or your side imaging. You can find these types of things pretty well. And the thing is, they reload. They hold fish consistently from year to year, and you can hit a spot, go back an hour later, and potentially catch another fish from it. Sometimes they hold whole schools of fish. They are some of my favorite pre-spawn areas to fish. In the next photo here, we've got a channel swing bank. Channel swing banks are like the highway for fish to get from their wintering area to their spawning location. So what that means is you have a lot of staging fish that are following the creek to get to their spawning areas and they will hold up a lot of times on the channel swing bank. So in this case, you can see where the, the channel comes in, you get like kind of a flat pea gravelly type area that turns into more of a chunk rock, bigger rock, almost bluffy type. And then on the other end, it starts tapering off again. And that's because the channel starts breaking away from the bank. So that's an area where those fish are following the channel and they become much more accessible because now they're close to the bank. So when you talk about fishing them, you could work a jig, a crankbait, a jerkbait. Those are all really good banks for channel swings. And again, all species of bass use them. They do, again, kind of depend where you're at. If you're way in the back of a creek arm and you're in four feet of water, probably more largemouth. If you're more closer to the main lake or in the front half of a major creek arm, you're talking more spots, more smallmouth. Uh, but they all use them as a, as a highway. And the great thing about a channel swing bank 
is they use them on the way out as well. So once they're done spawning, working their way back out to the main lake, they'll follow the same route on the way out. So it's a really good thing to look for. The next photo here, standing timber. This is one thing that we've really come to identify as being a big fish magnet in the pre-spawn period, thanks to our forward-facing sonar, you know, our active targets. Uh, it's one of those things where the big females will get out and suspend next to the standing timber because the standing timber provides warmth, a little bit of uh, comfort zone because it's got something to stand next to. And at the same time, it provides it as an ambush point. So when a school, a shad or bluegill or whatever swim by, those fish can jump out from behind that standing timber and, and grab it. But it definitely has become something we're targeting more and we see that the big some of the biggest fish in the lake are suspended out amongst that standing timber uh, in this case i would i would key in more in something like this photo here where you can see the standing timber in the back of a creek arm so it's a spawning pocket this fish could spawn anywhere there they're just staging by that timber waiting to pull into the bank to to uh to spawn Next up here, we've got just a simple rock transition bank. This is something that oftentimes goes overlooked. On this case, I like it because it's on a point. So you see it goes from very much of a pea gravel type bank to where you've got some actual rock and some more texture. Those That transition zone will carry off into the water as well. So you need to visualize what's on the bank and see that underwater. Those fish will like to hang out right where those transition zones are because it gives them a place to sit. It's a little bit different than, you know, just being straight rock or being straight pea gravel. And those end up being very good feeding areas. So if you've got a rock transition, whether it's on the main lake or back in a creek, they're worth fishing because those are areas that migrating fish will hold up on to feed. I definitely like rock transitions. And a lot of times people, when they think of rock transition, they're like, oh, it needs to go from pea gravel to bluff rock, like you'd see more on a channel swing. But it doesn't need to be that. It could be a simple change from uh, a clay bank to pea gravel or clay bank to a sand bank, you know, more of a, a hard bank versus a clay bank. It's any sort of change like that offers the fish a place to stage and hold. Next up here, you can see I've got just a, a creek arm that's got uh, two circles. It's got the, uh, the the main points to the creek from the main lake as well as back in the creek arm you've got some a secondary point that's circled basically these are all potentially pre pre-spawn staging points so you'll get fish the big females will move in off the main lake usually what they'll do is hold up on the on the primary point first between the uh, that separates the creek arm from the main lake and then as the spawn nears those fish will move from the the primary point back into the creek arm and start staging on the smaller secondary points before they, they spawn. And again, this is similar. On the way out, after they're done spawning, they'll, they'll use the secondary points as holding places, get to the primary point, and then move off into the main lake areas that they want to go. But you can't overlook points, especially if you're talking about lakes that don't have much from a contour standpoint or don't have much from a structure standpoint. Your points are going to really come into play. Ideally, if you could find some isolated cover on those points, like a brush pile, an isolated boulder, maybe a little bit of a rock vein, something along those lines will give the fish uh, a target to hold on, which then gives you guys an isolated target to cast at. So it's, a, it's the spot on the spot, right? So that's something that you definitely want to look for in any of these scenarios. Anytime you can find an isolated target on a high percentage spot, it makes that isolated target just that much better. Next up here, we got bluffs. Bluffs are phenomenal for especially pre-spawn fish because they're really good wintering locations. So as you start getting into the pre-spawn phase, you still have a lot of big fish that are in their wintering phase or starting to move off uh, out of their wintering phase into potentially spawning areas. And if you've got bluffs, then that's a very good route for them to take. Uh, it's also a really key thing to find bluffs that are right outside of, of spawning areas. So in this case, if I zoomed out on this photo, the uh, just north of this bluff on the top part of the picture would be a spawning bay. That would make like the bluff points really good places for a big female to stage. 
these are bluffs are some of the best areas to find potentially the biggest fish in the lake it's a good area to to throw like a glide bait to see some big fish come out and and take a peek at it um but bluffs the other thing i want to point out with bluffs is if you are on a lake with spotted bass or smallmouth they also can be very good spawning locations so not only now do you have a spot where fish might winter there you also have a spot where you may have staging females that are literally spawning on that bluff so you've got an area where you for sure have big fish that are hanging out next up here we got a roadbed Roadbeds are classic for, for uh, being highways for the fish to follow from wintering locations to spawning locations. A lot of times roadbeds will go from the main river channel up into the creek arms because those were the kind of the hollows that they were in. So when before the lake was flooded, those were flatter areas that were easier to make roads. But what happens then is you've got a direct line from potentially the river channel to the back of a creek. Well, the river channel is a good wintering area. The creek is a good spawning area. So what do those fish do? They get on that road and they travel on that hard bottom all the way back into the shallows of a spawning pocket. So what you wanna do is try to identify any sort of isolated uh, pieces of cover on that roadbed that could be more high percentage spots. So whether there's a bridge, a blowout hole, a brush pile, a big boulder, Anything like that, a big stump sometimes you have along roadbeds, those are things where the fish are going to hold. In this case, in this photo, there's a couple of bridges, and those bridges are really good high percentage spots because you have a blowout where the creek channel goes. So if you have fish that are following the creek channel and come to an old blowout hole where there was an old roadbed, that gives them an isolated spot to stop and feed, and it just makes it a high percentage spot. So roadbeds can be very, very good because of the fact they're taking fish from the main lake to the shallows. They give them a hard bottom. In some instances, if the roadbed's shallow enough, you'll even have fish that spawn right on the roadbed. So don't overlook the roadbeds. The last one here that I've got is more for the northern guys because we don't have a lot of lakes like a lot that have the spots that we talked about here in the upper Midwest, we have a lot more natural lakes. And the best thing, in my opinion, you can do for a big, big largemouth is to find some of the shallowest kind of weed filled bays because they warm the fastest. And when they warm the fastest, you get fish that pull into those. Here, we've got a much shorter uh, spawning window. We get the ice leaves usually in sometime in April. And then at that point, the fish are spawning by May. So there's a very short pre-spawn window. And once the ice comes off, those fish are looking for the warmest water possible and they'll be moving back into the shallowest bays that during the summer a lot of times are choked out. Whether they have weeds or lily pads, they just are those dark bottom, muddy bottom areas that the big fish will head into. And then usually if there's one around, there'll be a lot of fish around in those areas. So guys, I'm here to tell you that if you fish these locations during the pre-spawn window, regardless of where you're at in the country, you've got the shot at catching some monster fish. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this was something that you guys enjoyed. If it was, hit the like button, share it on your social media pages, and stay tuned for another video tomorrow.